Um, so as we get into this, just keep in mind um, all, of, all of the things that we've already talked about, such as grit, wellness, leadership, philosophy, all that good stuff. So a little bit about us. Um, my name is Abigail Bot Roberts. I just got married, so I'm in the, the process of changing my name, which if you've ever changed your name, it's a really long process. Um, I'm the interim coordinator of student engagement and leadership here at PSC, as most of you guys know already. I um, have been working in this office for a total of about two and a half years, and um, I just recently was put into the position I'm in now about six months ago. Hey everyone, my name is Keandra. I'm the Assistant Coordinator of Student Engagement and Leadership. Um, I started working in the office first as the SGA president. I've been an SGA president for about a year and a half now, and I graduate in May. Ooh. So what is leadership? Um, we really wanted to start off with a good quote. I think those hit home a lot of times. Um, leadership is influence from John C. Maxwell, I think kind of sums up what leadership is. Um, what do you guys think of when you think of leadership? You can kind of put that in the chat um, as we start continuing, or we continuing this presentation, but go ahead and start thinking about what you think leadership is um, and putting that in the chat. So when you're thinking about leadership, you also have to think about leadership styles. So. Leadership styles are based on like your personality traits. They're based on like when you're in a group of people and when you're directing, you're motivating and you're managing your group. So we are focusing today on different superheroes. So let's see what those different leadership styles are. So I also want you to start off by thinking about this quote, great leaders motivate others to perform, create and innovate. So when you're looking at leadership styles, there are 10 different key leadership styles we wanna focus on. You've got a motivational leader who, a motivational leader is more like a coach. The first motivational leader who comes to mind when I think about a superhero from the Avengers is Captain America. Captain America, he brings in his team and he is always on the go telling everyone, we got this, we can do this and we can work together. You Next, you've got a visionary leader who this leadership style is more, you know, they're more focused on being able to like process the goals they are more inspirational and that person is Iron Man. Iron Man, he can see everything he wants to do. He's visual. He can see flat past the basics of everything the team can see and he goes beyond. The next leader I want you to think about is a servant leader who is a person who's humble and protective and that Avenger who comes to mind is Captain Marvel. She is more of that person who she comes up at the end when everybody's kind of been brought together by Captain America and her leadership style is, well, let's go do it. I'm gonna protect the team to the best of my ability. The next leader we've got on the list is an autocratic leader who this type of leadership style, they're more based on results, they're more focused. And that person is Doctor Strange. If you've seen Endgame, you saw in the movie Doctor Strange, he was the person who could tell you whether or not they would be able to beat Thanos. And you know, he was all based on the focus of the results that would come from their outcome of the battle. And the next person we've got, we wanna focus on the top five is the bureaucratic leader. This leader is a little bit more of that person who's able to tell the team, okay, this is what we have to do. That person's more like Bruce Banner. He's gonna tell the team, okay, I'm gonna support you in this way, in this aspect, but this is what you have to do. So those top five leaders, they embody all of these next five who they're transformational by being important to the team. They're transactional by always being there to help. They're a pace setter, they set the motion for the team and they're democratic. And laws like fair, they kind of step back when they see that someone else's strength is being put. So let's remember that great leaders motivate others to perform well and create and innovate. So let's talk a little bit about assumptions and leadership. Um, first of all, what are assumptions? These are things that are accepted as true or certain to happen, but you have no proof of that. Um, so let's put in the chat a couple of assumptions you have about leadership. What, when, you, when leadership comes to mind, what's the first thing you think is true? Someone who guides, they have it all together. That's a great assumption. I feel like a lot of people think that. Organized. 
I'm loving it. Headstrong. These are all really great words that um, kind of describe, have a vision for something. I love that. Um, that's a great assumption of leadership. Um, so let's talk about some of those common assumptions. Yes, yeah, so some of the common assumptions of leadership is that leaders must know it all, is that they basically make all of the decisions because it's all about the power of being a leader. They tell everyone what to do and it's very lonely when some of those assumptions really are not true. Um, Troy just put in the comment section, I kind of want to share what he said. I'm always suspicious of people seeking leadership positions. I don't know why, but I'm always wondering the motive one has to, to want to lead others. I love that. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about that in a minute, um, but I've wanted to share this video. It's about three minutes, so it is a bit long, but it's very engaging um, to kind of show you what leadership looks like from start to finish. If you've learned a lot about leadership and making a movement, then let's watch a movement happen start to finish in under three minutes and dissect some lessons. First, of course, a leader needs the guts to stand alone and look ridiculous. But what he's doing is so simple, it's almost instructional. This is key. You must be easy to follow. Now here comes the first follower with a crucial role. He publicly shows everyone else how to follow. Notice how the leader embraces him as an equal. So it's not about the leader anymore. It's about them, plural. Notice how he's calling to his friends to join in. So he takes guts to be a first follower. You stand out and you brave ridicule yourself. Being a first follower is an underappreciated form of leadership. The first follower transforms a lone nut into a leader. If the leader is the flint, the first follower is the spark that really makes the fire. Now here's the second follower. This is a turning point. It's proof the first has done well. Now it's not a lone nut and it's not two nuts. Three is a crowd and a crowd is news. A movement must be public. Make sure outsiders see more than just the leader. Everyone needs to see the followers because new followers emulate followers, not the leader. Now here come two more people, then three more immediately. Now we've got momentum. This is the tipping point and now we have a movement. As more people jump in, it's no longer risky. If they were on the fence before, there's no reason not to join in now. They won't stand out, they won't be ridiculed, and they will be part of the in crowd if they hurry. And over the next minute, you'll see the rest who prefer to stay part of the crowd because eventually they'd be ridiculed for not joining. And ladies and gentlemen, that is how a movement is made. So let's recap what we've learned. If you are a version of the shirtless dancing guy all alone, remember the importance of nurturing your first few followers as equals, making everything clearly about the movement, not you. Be public, be easy to follow. But the biggest lesson here, did you catch it? Leadership is over glorified. Yes, it started with the shirtless guy and he'll get all the credit, but you saw what really happened. It was the first follower that transformed a lone nut into a leader. There's no movement without the first follower. See, we're told that we all need to be leaders, but that would be really ineffective. The best way to make a movement, if you really care, is to courageously follow and show others how to follow. When you find a lone nut doing something great, have the guts to be the first person to stand up and join in. So um, what are some of y'all's thoughts about that? Um, what he's saying about leadership's over glorified. Uh, the way you actually get momentum is, is getting followers that emulate followers, not followers that emulate leaders. Um, I, when I saw this video, it blew my mind. So I wanted to share it with you guys because I feel like it kind of um, helps open your mind to some, some different leadership styles. So let's talk a little bit about good and bad leadership, kind of going back to what Troy said about, I don't really trust our intentions. Um, so what's the difference between good and bad leadership? We can argue that both Thor and Loki are leaders in their own right, but one fights for good and one fights for most of the time evil. Um, does that make Loki any less of a leader? Absolutely not. Um, what it does though is is we need to decide what kind of leaders we wanna be. 
Um, and I'm hoping you guys are wanting to be good leaders. Um, when we think of leaders we want here, especially with students, faculty, and staff at Pensacola State College, we want leaders who will fight for the good. Um, how do we foster that kind of leadership though? Um, we need leadership values. So let's talk a little bit about how we can foster that. So let's talk about what values are first. Um, a value is something we love. Um, it's what we're passionate about. It's something we cannot live without. Uh, they do tend to be conceptual. So it's something we can't touch. It's not something we can hold. Um, and if you know your values, it becomes easier to know when something is right for you and to make the decision that you're fulfilling and rewarding. Um, this kind of goes back to what Saul was talking about, um, of finding your passion will make grit much easier. Um, it goes hand in hand. If you have grit and leadership, you need to have your values straight. Um, so what are you working towards? Values are also how you interpret what's happening around you um, every second of every single day. They impact your feelings, which impact your actions, which become your results. Being aware of what you value get, can give you a much better understanding of what motivates or drive you. Um, so how are these obtained and can they really change? Um, and how will these affect your leadership in your day-to-day -day life? So leadership values. Leadership values are like our core beliefs and our principles that guide us through our personal and professional lives. Our leadership values, they make us happy. They make us who we believe that we are. Um, a person who I believe embodies our leader, like what leadership values are the most is Captain America. He is someone who, he lives truly to being honest about everything he goes after. His integrity is something he holds near and dear to his heart. His empathy for protecting the world and caring for others who can't protect themselves and being dedicated to the work that he does every day. Our leadership values like Captain America is something that we have to hold true to ourselves. Something like how Saul Flora said that having grit was important and being who you are. Leadership values make you who you are. So you have to develop them. And sometimes that comes from our experiences and how we change over time. So that goes into can our values change? Over time, as we go, grow through leadership, we're gonna have different experiences in our life that give us the ups and the downs. And the person who we think of next as a superhero is Thor. And this first picture on, this, on the right, you'll see Thor as this person whose eyes are lit up and he's looking at himself and he can tell that you know he's changed. The first Thor we saw in the first MCU movie Thor was the typical average everyday Joe. He was a prince who, yes, he loved his country, Asgard, he loved his people, but he wasn't a leader who really knew what he was doing. He didn't have that full unlocked potential of leadership. As we grow in leadership, our values are going to change. Our grit's going to get there. Our passion and our endurance for everything we're doing is going to grow. Um, I love the saying, beliefs divide. Um, beliefs are contextual, so it's very different from values. They come from experience we, experiences we've faced. When you use your beliefs to make a decision, you're assuming the relationship of the past, which led to the belief, will apply to the future. It goes back to those assumptions you have about leadership. Um, this may not be the best way to support your needs in a rapidly changing world, as a lot of this is gonna change from day to day. Um, so while beliefs divide, values can unite. Um, values, again, are not contextual, they're universal. They come from the experience of being human. Um, when you use your values to make a decision, you're focusing on what's important to you, um, specifically what you need to feel a sense of well-being. So that passion Saul was talking about um, that will help you bring the grit to your leadership is what um, is it's all factored into values. Um, so a really great example of this, um, beliefs divide, values unite, is Captain America and, uh, and Iron Man in Civil War. Uh, both Captain and Tony have awesome and valid points. Individuals with superpowers can be dangerous and need to be controlled, but both have the same value, protects the planet and the people on it, but their beliefs differ in how to obtain that goal. Finding the level ground with your team will help you relate to their values rather than focus on their differences. So 
we're talking about how our beliefs divide and our values unite, we want to also make sure that when we're going into our values, we have our own leadership philosophy, which is taking our personality traits and we make them into who we are. So this next exercise, I want you from this list or from some of your own words you may have to come up with five words that you have that you value being something that embodies you and make your own leadership philosophy. And next, we're going to share with you our leadership philosophy, but in the chat, if you'd like, you can share your five words that you'd want to build with your philosophy. Take your time. It might it might take you a while. Um, I know it took us, I think we sat down and put one together. It took us 30 minutes. Um, so do take your time, but keep this in the back of your mind and start working on it now of find your top five values. And this can change, remember, but right now, what are your top five values? And that is what you're going to work towards. Um, so let's look at what our leadership philosophy looks like. Um, it's basically once you've picked your top five, you're going to put together, it's almost like a mission statement for who you are. Um, these words should describe and guide who you are as a leader. So keep that in mind when you're picking them. Um, things to think about before you put them together. Um, what are your personal definition for your values? Don't go look it up in a dictionary. Find a word and make your own definition of it. Um, what does this actually mean to you? Not what does the dictionary says it means to you? Um, how you envision these values, how do you envision these values playing a role in your leadership? Make sure that these will actually fit into your plan because if not, then you're just gonna be working against yourself. Um, so let's look at what Keandra and I created. This is a joint leadership philosophy. So um, obviously y'alls will say I instead of we, um, but together this is how Keandra and I want to lead this office. So we believe that leadership is instilled in commitment of the leader. It is essential to believe in what you are working towards. We must be aware and bring awareness to the social climate and needs of our situations and projects as we lead. We promise to always be approachable and foster a community that is diverse and gives everyone a sense of belonging. Most importantly, we must be flexible as we grow and our values change. So um, I'll give you guys probably a few minutes to just kind of, I'll go back to the list, ponder on those values and find if it's just one right now, that's okay. And put it in the chat for us. Um, I would love to see what your values are. Uh, I see a chat um, going back to the video. I like how the video says that the leaders should focus on movement and also respect the followers. Absolutely. The most important part of being a leader is, is treating your followers as an equal. Um, Cause if you don't, you're not going to, you're not going to get very far. Belonging, recognition and growth. I love those three. Uh, commitment, bravery and adaptability. Especially in this time, I feel like adaptability and growth are one of the two biggest needs <laughs> for leaders. I love those. And do keep in mind, these can change. When I was in high school, I did every kind of club. So I was quite a student leader, but I feel like my values were very different back then. Um, I feel like I've learned a lot of, along the way. I um, loved, it was almost like an attention grab, which I hate to say it, um, but it definitely was. It was, if I'm a leader, then I get to be the center of attention and everyone gets to use my ideas. Um, and I slowly realized that my ideas are not always the best. <laughs> so growing and adapting to what my needs were for the situation, it was, it was very much um, a learning experience. Jonathan says, being dependable, thinking about the whole picture, respect everything, try to understand and listen. I love that. Um, those, those are some awesome um, five. And I love that you said thinking about the whole picture. Uh, that's a great one. Preston said encouragement, diligence, and adaptability. Again, with the adaptability, I love diligence. That is a great word. Um, Troy said something kind of bugs me. If a leader's values change, then how can we trust those values that the leader professes to begin with? That's great. That is a great question. Um, so that, that 
you make me think all kinds of things, Troy. Um, it's really about, so like the project and the passion. So those don't change, um, but your values might. So as you grow, um, you might realize you need to value adaptability a little more. Um, that doesn't mean you only have five values. You can have a bunch. So what I'm saying with your values change is your values kind of add up. Um, you become, you have more values and then you focus on certain ones at different times. Um, so keep that in mind. You're not, your values are not as much changing. Um, that's a great point. It's more of you're collecting more values and you might put more focus on some at some points. So like in high school, my values were very different and then I grew and I might have some of those values that I had in high school, but I've collected a lot more and I'm focusing on more as, as I go. Does that make sense? Um, I love wisdom and approachability. Approachability is a huge one, um, especially as a leader, you don't wanna be daunting. Acceptance, loyalty, flexibility. I love loyalty. That is a great one. Exactly. Strategic mission doesn't change. Yes. Um, uh, it, while your values, they don't technically change, you'll have different focuses at different times. Strategic mission. Love that. Um, Katie said, that's deep, Troy. I wonder if it depends on your philosophy, too. All people are inherently good, mean, well. You are making us think today. I love that. Um, and then self-respect, giving, authentic. Oh, I love authentic diversity and acknowledgement. So I think we've got some good ones to think about. I think we've definitely kind of covered values. So let's move along because I think we're kind of running out of time. So our next slide we're going to talk about is leadership and communication. And we want you to focus on a quote from James Hume where the art of communication is the language of leadership. So if, if the art of communication is the language of communication or if leadership, it should be pretty important. It should be pretty high on our, on our list. Um, this is one of the skills that leaders need to be constantly improving upon um, and, and changing the way you're doing things. So let's look at what communication actually is. This is the transfer of information, data, and knowledge by which leaders are influencing their colleagues, teams, or entire organization. So th that's a massive undertaking. Um, so let's break it down into two things. Um, leadership uh, communication is understanding your role as a leader and understanding the voice that you have as an individual. So leadership communication is really goal driven and it's being able to relate to those on your team. So leadership communication has five dimensions of leadership aspects that we really have to value. Um, the first one is honoring your leader voice and cultivating your power and presence. When we think of this on a superhero level, we think of Black Panther. He was the king of Wakanda and whenever he walked into a room, he knew his power as to be in his presence. But if you go to bullet number two, we have to forge a personal connection working with others and sharing that dominant vision for the future. He could sit on his board of different tribe leaders from Wakanda and he could get their perspective on how they view things. As a leader, we have to do the same. And next we'll get the other three aspects of leadership. So the next three aspects are understand the values of your team and understand how they communicate effectively. If you are not communicating in a way that they understand, then it's pointless. Um, so make sure maybe your team is more visual. Um, so do a printout of a calendar and have them write notes. Uh, maybe they, they need different things. So just communicate with your team. How do you want information? This will help you a lot in the long run. Engage with others as a leader with great communication, and this will draw out the leaders in them. Um, so you'll create more of you. Uh, which is great. This will foster an environment of collaboration and partner goal setting. As I said, like in high school, I thought, well, my, I'm the leader. My, my ideas are the best ideas. When really, as a leader, I feel like we are looking at a really small piece of the puzzle sometimes, whereas our team might have all the other pieces. So you need to say, okay, so what piece are you looking at? What piece are you looking at? And put together that puzzle. Um, and you can't do that without collaborating and asking them their ideas. And, 
And again, communicate in a way that resonates with those on your team. Um, it, it's really, really big aspect of communication. If they are not understanding what you're saying, then you are not communicating. Um, since this is all Avengers themed, there's a really great scene in Infinity War where they really had a breakdown in communication. So I thought this would be a fun little um, time breaker, kind of let you just watch a video um, just to see an example of a breakdown in communication. for the same thing and had no idea. Um, so while this is a very extreme uh, <laughs> extreme example of a breakdown in communication, uh, I think it's, it's really applicable and helps you kind of put that together. So yes, um, the name of the movie is Infinity War. I think it's on Disney Plus if you guys want to watch it. <laughs> so what are the takeaways that we can uh, apply to our day-to-day -day lives? Leadership goes hand in hand with responsibility or personality. Most assumptions of leadership are not true. Leadership values can change over time or you can collect more as we said. Yeah, we as individuals must build our own leadership philosophy. A good leader is a team player. Knowing how to communicate with your team is vital as we just saw in the last clip. With that being said, said that you haven't seen those those movies but um avengers assemble is basically the thing they say before they attack obviously um so with that being said leaders assemble let's go attack leadership and let's go be the best leaders we can be 